I think everything has to come from the book. I've done it before with things, you know, if you play Shakespeare, you're forever playing parts that other people have played before. If you play Hamlet, there's Burton and Olivier, and I just did um, Cyrano de Bergerac on Broadway, and, and before me there'd been Kevin Klein and, you know, Derek Jacobi. So I was used to this thing of, uh, and, and my feeling is you just have to go to the source and just have to keep reading that and keep thinking what that is. and. Um, and not, and then nick everything that all the other people before you have done. <laughs> so I was going to say, did you look back to kind of the people who've who played him before, or was it just the book that you used? I read the book, and then I watched the Gene Wilder film once, and it sort of absolutely coincided with everything that I was thinking. I thought it was quite brilliant. That's when it's kind of unnerving. I watched the Johnny Depp thing, and I felt there was too much backstory. I thought they had to try to fill in too many things there, and I thought they were kind of willfully dark, but it's still brilliant. Um, and also there's a different energy if you're in front of two and a half thousand, you know, children and grandparents in a big, big theatre, there's a different energy to playing and singing your heart out than, than doing a movie. So that kind of pushes you towards a different kind of way of doing things. But um, yeah, no, I just sort of follow my instinct, really. Good. So kind of using a bit of Roald Dahl, but a bit of your own oh, yeah. unique um, stuff yes. too. He's funny. Yeah, no, just, you can hear the people <laughs> laughing. Cheeky. You know, turn your tan around. Um, it was he. He was a funny character, but through the rehearsal process, I managed to uh, squeeze the writer and get him to write a load more jokes for me. Um, so you did wing a few. You, the, you pushed it, it in that direction. It, I did push it in that direction. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the really stupid jokes he he. he I think at least time. once a week I'd say, that's amazing, what's that? I need so do you add a couple in? Or you ad-lib a few times? No, no, not, not so much ad-libbing, but w it, when finessing. you're sort of finessing, yes. Oh, that's a nice word. Yes, and, <laughs> and threatening the writer, um, <laughs> um, David Grieg. But he did, you know, once you st we started working together on it, he was coming back every week with a, well, how about this? Re he had to do a rewrite on a scene, and he'd come back and there'd be some very silly jokes. For, for my character in it, and so and we were building on it. So I was, you know, very chuffed in. in and you love doing that. Yeah, yeah. That I, it flicks fun. your bait. Yeah. Well, part of what Nigel was just saying is that he was so open to that. You know, so David would come back. He'd have a scene and they'd say, "What do you think?" And you go, "I don't like this. And this is brilliant. We could go further with this." So that was always there. I think also. You know, Sam's directed huge movies, and, and this is very similar to a movie where you have these big departments. There's a conjuring department, a dancing department, music department, design, and, you know, he's got the best people he can possibly get in those roles, and then he oversees them all collaborating, really, and he's very, very good at that. Like, I mean, a, like a movie director, as you say. Yeah. Like a, he's very good at being the, like the captain who of comes in at the yes of the whole ship and it's a massive tanker. Yeah, a movie or a show like this is a massive tanker. So but he does encourage every department to fight for their life and do their best work. Yeah, and then yeah. he'll the you know, so then he'll have to say no, yes, no, yes. And that's but he's not autocratic. I was very impressed with him that he managed to stay charming and open as as Douglas said to suggestions of the <laughs> I was to more of your jokes. Yeah, to more of my jokes. <laughs> yeah. No, but also to to sort of character thoughts, you know, what he, he was always open saying, well, what should we do here? My problem is here. How do I get us from there to there? And I want this to be the emotional heart of this. What, what can we do here? He wasn't like an autocrat coming in and saying, right, you move there, you do this, you do that. That's what I... Okay, so on the ground, working with... Yeah, yeah, really, really brilliant director. I think he's brilliant, yeah. Yeah, I think six days a week, uh, being that it's a, you know, there's a level of fitness required too and all that kind of stuff. You have to look after yourself. But yeah, there's a form of um, almost autism, isn't there? When you're saying the same thing in the same place. So I quite enjoy all that. I quite like just <laughs> getting it better and better and better and better and doing it again and again and again. Um, For the first six months. Yeah, and then you go slightly insane. And you start having out-of-body experiences. <laughs> my, my thing is never repeat. Does the energy change though? Do you feel that each night it does feel different yeah. because there is a different audience there? Completely, I do. Yeah, I think that each audience tells you, you're listening and you hear slightly different nuances. So you're, you, you I don't think slightly. we've done the same show yet. You? We've done about 110 shows. Mm. I think every night there's been something where you go, oh, that's, I'll follow That's that. amazing to hear. Mm. Mm.
I think uh, there's a great reward in the amount of children who are absolutely gobsmacked. And Nigel was saying earlier on about how some of the most simple effects too are, you know, the hydraulics can go and the videotape can go, but if a butterfly pops out of a cane or a you know, paper plane goes across, mm. those moments which are really low tech, and this is your... Yeah, you know, the low tech moments are the magic, really. <laughs> and that gets me every night still. I'm meant to be asleep when he throws the paper dart, but I can see it, so I just pretend so I can see, because it's still <laughs> to see it float off. Through the, across the whole audience's head. And yeah, it is nice to go to a completely new generation of people who sometimes haven't even read the book and the first time in the theatre. You know, that's quite a responsibility. Absolutely, bringing it fresh to them. Yeah, yeah. Mike, do you want to go first? My favourite chocolate My bar. My favourite chocolate bar is a crunchy. A crunchy, I love a crunchy. Well, that's a bit intense, though. You couldn't have that on a regular basis. <laughs> Do you want a lighter you? something? Yeah, I think something more like a Twix or a, Twix? a you know. A, a Twix crunchy, is a lunch if you had, a Twix you is a biscuit. It's not a chocolate. <laughs> it doesn't even count itself. You couldn't have a crunchy more than once a month, though, could you? You have a crunchy every three minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> Great. You'd be on such a sugar low afterwards, wouldn't you? You'd be. You'd need. You'd need another crunchy. Yeah, You'd need it, yeah. So we'll just bounce between the tricks and crunchy. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if the, the original, the Wonka bars, came back right now? They should be on yeah, the shops Yeah, there, there are Wonka bars or something, but um, isn't there? You can buy They're hard to there track is down. A, there is a thing called Wonka which sells little, little sweets in boxes and things, but it's not like Wonka chocolate bars, is it? No, we should bring them back. Truly wish to be.